Uh, I'm really happy uh, when I look back on what we managed to do, uh, but there is also this um, tinge of uh, skepticism in a way uh, when I think about the um, Lithuania's development cooperation or uh, Lithuania's international projects in general. We say that Digital Explorer somewhat represents also a missed opportunity because uh, if things were easier in a lot of ways in Lithuania, we already could have had like uh, four spin-off projects, but they were not. So um, that's why I would like to invite uh, panelists, also all somewhat dear friends uh, of the project uh, in different ways to discuss of what it means to make Lithuania a European uh, lab of ideas in action because Digital Explorers has been a European pilot project. Uh, I think that one of the panelists is still uh, not here or he is, if someone could check. But I will start, I guess, then by inviting Elius, uh, head of uh, Invest Lithuania, Elius Civilis, who was also part of Digital Explorers Advisory Board uh, and uh, supported us with his enthusiasm. Uh, so you can start taking the seats. I think that will be uh, easier. And. Uh, <laughs> Margarita Shashirgita, um, when I talk about uh, Afrikot team, I must say that uh, half of the team is alumni of the Institute, <laughs> so you also contributed to the project in that way. Margarita, head of uh, Institute of International Relations and Political Science. Uh, then Jawa uh, Zivonene, who has also been part of uh, Digital Explorers Advisory Board, uh, also uh, supportive in many different ways now a uh, lead consultant at uh, NRD Companies, previously deputy director of uh, communications. communications regulatory authority, yes. Yes, and Rivantajilus. Advisor to the Prime Minister in Digital Transformation and in a lot of different ways, uh, advisor to Digital Explorers. And we are waiting for Vice Minister of Foreign Affairs, Manta Sadomenas, who actually is the one responsible for this idea being written in the Lithuanian government program. And he will be here in one minute, so you can start your... Fantastic. Thank you, Manta. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Excited to be here um, for many reasons. One of the reasons I realized this is the very first time in my professional career working in the public sector, we have a closing event. <laughs> because it's either, you know, delayed or it's either, you know, finished with the result we don't really want to celebrate. <laughs> so congratulations on this, and this is obvious, the win. The win for this country, the win. <laughs> so on this positive notion, uh, uh, this panel discussion is actually not, you know, to complain on what was wrong, but rather, you know, to celebrate and enjoy uh, and discuss whether or not that could be scaled on the broader picture, on the broader picture and have this country as a, you know, this launch pad for the ideas. And with me, I had those uh, really uh, distinguished people, and I should say these are the best people we can have on the panel. Uh, uh, I'm really uh, excited to be with you guys. Uh, and I would like your really, uh, you know, uh, honest contribution, not being too much politically correct, but rather, you know, um, being that enthusiastic as this whole program went. So may I start, you know, uh, with a very simple question, and, and let's do following. I mean, I won't be pointing, you know, just who is uh, supposed to answer which question, but rather let's have it as a discussion. We have a couple of mics, so if you would like to. Yeah, so maybe for just warming up, I would like to ask uh, Margarita on a very simple question. Since you are, you know, uh, involved with the uh, academia and you do many research fields, do you think the academia can be actually the, this igniter for those fields where we as a country could focus on? I mean, is there a demand for this type of research to realize what academia um, can do 
to you know di discover those areas where we as a country could focus on with uh, being a launchpad for ideas. Thank you, thank you very much. First of all, thank you very much the organizers for inviting me to be here. And I'm really, really too happy to be here in the event and to celebrate the project organized by Africa exactly because what Mante has said because I really love the projects and the institutions that our alumni are creating and we love our alumni very much and we are very proud of our alumni so when you ask how academia could contribute to, to the development of the fields where state has to put more efforts prob probably or develop so this is the perfect example by educating the students by creating the culture within the students community of creativity leadership uh, working for their country aiming to do more and better exactly the things what Africa had did with the project. So I think that I'm proud and I can bring this in as an example of what, what, what academia could do. But um, that was on the positive note. But on a more probably negative note, what, what, what I, do I see at the moment is the lack of the culture of cooperation between the academia, public institutions, and business. And there are so many good ideas within the students' community, but also in, in, within the, in the community of uh, teachers, professors, researchers. But it seems sometimes that we sit in some, some type of a ivory tower, and we explore these ideas, and these ideas are not getting implemented or no one's interested in these ideas in business or in the public administration civil service so and we for instance as an institute try to go outside and try to introduce some of these ideas but then people like those ideas but nothing at the end of the day happens and i think that this lack of the culture of working together is one of the main challenges that we are facing at the moment. Because academia could think of lots of things. We, academia is the ground for innovation. Both research and the students is a vibrant community. But to get things done, we have to have other partners on, bo on, on both. Civil, uh, civil service, public institutions, and also business. That's a very good point because we have so many people actually from uh, the other stakeholders and let's ask uh, them how they think about this. Diamantas, you're absolutely amazing person when it comes to your CV. You have so many connections and diverse experience. Can you tell us a little bit about yourself? What's your background? Just, you know, to put the context and then, you know, um, giving us insights from the central government whether or not we have, you know, ambitions or tools or policies that are actually, uh, you know, directed towards uh, those ideas being tested in the thing. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So I'm Rima Tashiris, advisor to Prime Minister, and um, uh, I do have some IT background. I uh, had the pleasure working with Manta. In, um, in NRD and uh, uh, mostly in East Africa. Uh, and uh, currently I'm uh, advisor to Prime Minister responsible for uh, driving uh, digital ag agenda in the government. And uh, what I find, yeah, uh, perfectly agreeing with the, this kind of lack of cooperation uh, thing what I would say, it's not because of the, what my observation is, uh, that it's not because of the lack of cooperation as such, but really because of the structure of how government works. I mean, this is not a personal problem, this is a systematical problem where people have to take risks to cooperate. I mean, cooperating with business is risky for public service, because you never know uh, who will question uh, uh, the 
whatever conflict of interest uh, they can be and so on. And what I find in this example with Digital Explorers particularly encouraging, I think that one of the successes was of this idea, it was exactly that it was not taken by uh, public service and project executed from within, but executed from without, from, uh, from outside of the, because that pushed boundaries of the what is possible, what can be done, what could not be done, I mean, uh, created different dynamics of the, of the power. And what I hope that eventually more and more we will see it as a model of how it can be done, not as a, something that, uh, well, uh, one single event landing from the Mars uh, of, of digital spaceship, but that this is something that can be done and it's not to criticize the, because, I mean, in fact, with the government, you really don't want too much of innovation. For example, you don't want too much of innovation with the bank. You don't want your teller to innovate with your account. Yeah? I mean, you want them to be really cautious about, you know, strict with the process and so on. So it's not very easy for this big machine as the uh, uh, government with institutions which should avoid mistakes to do lots of um, innovative things as we would like them to have. So in fact, and this is what I think about uh, when we saw this uh, nice thing about what a Nigerian startup was bought by uh, Stripe. It, in fact, it's innovative. Stripe is innovative, new company, but which grew so big and uh, with their business, so that they feel it's easier for them to intake other startups than to, to innovate uh, at the vast space themselves. So in this regard, what I see it as a kind of hopeful model, how we can do faster, things faster, more interesting, maybe more uh, going outside of the what we as a government what we used to uh, to do and uh, in uh, yeah and to uh, have results that we we want now not in the some kind of future. All right, so <clears throat> we have Yeva next to Rimantas, and Yeva just quit the public sector, <laughs> and maybe that's the reason. I mean, you are one of the most you know innovation supporting uh, public servants. Uh, who are so much engaged with the startups, with different United Nations initiatives, with the GovTech and many others. So <clears throat> now that you left this big boat that floats through the country, how do you see that? Is it really that uh, the public sector is not having this appetite for, for this disruption, just like digital explorers, Gary? Mm, I think yes and no. <laughs> From one side, I think we have this very clear understanding for many years already in Lithuania that uh, devel development cooperation is part of our agenda, it's in governmental programs and in speeches of the president and so on. And we do that, but I think we do that in quite safe environment. When we talk about uh, public sector uh, initiatives uh, in uh, this uh, area, we usually talk about the countries that we know very well about Eastern Partnership countries and uh, being part of uh, public service, being part of communications regulatory authority, I really engaged in this project, helping uh, Sakhartwell, uh, helping Ukraine uh, to do things better. But uh, then I changed, uh, let's say, the sides, uh, if I may say so, and uh, came to public, uh, private sector. I said, and I saw that not all the things are so easy and so clear. Because uh, then we are talking about uh, other countries, other regions, where we as Lithuania can really bring a lot of good ideas that we tested here, what we know how to do and how not to do that. Because usually, uh, sometimes it's really more uh, u uh, useful to share your mistakes, not just success, uh, success stories. Uh, then suddenly we see that it's not so easy to get the support or to get the understanding. And of course we can go as company which does that, 
And that's why quite successfully uh, we have projects in Africa and Asia in the Caribbean region and that's great. But uh, if we could do it not just as a single company but as a country, we would be much more successful. And so maybe we should really look at the practical uh, knowledge and experience from Slovakia, from Denmark, from Estonia, we, we all love so much, because we know how to do that, and I'm sure that we can really do that if we want. Fantastic. So all the eyes now to our Vice Minister of uh, Foreign Affairs, uh, Mr. Vantas Adonenes. You have just heard about uh, so many positive things about uh, what can be done, and now everyone uh, have the spotlight into the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, asking whether or not that's really a policy, whether or not we really want to do this. And I mean, what's your view being, you know, always uh, a frontman when it comes to international relationship? Gosh. <laughs> Good evening. Um, I, I really feel slightly out of place here. I mean, so I, I, I think that my real, really, the only claim to being here is that I was once in South Sudan in 2013 uh, for three weeks. Uh, civil war started a month later after I, talk, after I worked with the uh, members of parliament. I hope it wasn't as a result of that. But, <laughs> but um, uh, yes, but I also am uh, in charge of uh, our development policy. And um, I, I have a, sort of quite a few pages of information on that, but I, I don't think that's what you're interested in. And um, uh, let me start slightly from a improbable uh, and departure and you know laboratory Lithuania is a lab of ideas um okay well I sort of invented that phrase well I, I didn't invent that phrase but I put it in the government manifesto okay um, and um, because I, I like this, the sound of it and the reason that I like the sound of it it's not just because it's a nice phrase but it's also what we have been what we have been for more than 30 years now uh, you know when Lithuania emerges as an independent nation, uh, you know, there are lots of experts who are coming and saying, oh, you just have to do this and this and that, and then, you know, it will be hunky-dory. You know, and they just have to uh, make these market reforms and, and install democratic institutions and all that. And, you know, and you'll eventually converge with our way of doing things. Okay, and that's, that's sort of what we still think happened. But that's not quite true. Because uh, uh, we had to constantly reinvent ourselves. Because the situation we were in, uh, emerging from... Uh, sort of a, a state socialism of totalitarian state was not in a position that anybody knew how to get uh, sort of out of. So, uh, in a sense, while we're doing uh, reforms which we thought were sort of convergence reforms, we were actually doing divergence reforms. We're sort of having to constantly reinvent ourselves, reinvent uh, our, our economy, reinvent our society. Uh, of course, having some models before our eyes and learning from them, learning f uh, sometimes. Uh, mostly learning from their successes, uh, rarely, but learning from their mistakes as well. Uh, but, you know, for 30 years we have been constantly sort of reforming and reforming and reforming, reinventing and reinventing and having to adjust once again. And society at some point gets tired and they said, no, well, can we have fewer reforms now that we're in the EU? Can we just rest for a little bit? But then we say, no, 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 but we have to get into Schengen. We have to get into the Europe. We have to get into the OECD. And, you know, there's always a sort of next corner that we have to get round on. But um, and so there is a sort of the society which is really a marathon uh, runner. For 30 years, it has been running and changing and changing and sort of, you know, constantly reinventing itself. Uh, it sort of tells itself that I'm just running to the next corner and, and then I'll rest. But it's not true about us. We are sort of the ones that have been constantly innovating. Constantly innovating sort of the way we govern, the way we do economy, the way we relate to the world, and, and so on and so forth. So we are a lab of ideas in action. Um, and now, what's uh, the, the second dimension that I just very quickly touch on is, uh, you know, our, what we do in our development. Uh, why is it important, this the development aid dimension, and especially Africa, since we're now talking about Africa, and so that's what I was thinking about. Um, we come to the sort of area which is totally new to us. I mean, sort of this, you know, it's not an exaggeration to say that, uh, despite the fact that Germany is having done things there, and sort of, you know, all of you having done things, and me having been to South Sudan, but nevertheless, sort of, <laughs> it's, it's, for us as a state, it's a totally uh, new, uh, new experience. Uh, and that, that's, that's, in a sense, a, a, a blank page, something that we can start writing our history and our relations with it on a totally, you know, without any, a shackling um, 
prehistory of, of uh, you know, needs, uh, uh, ob obligations, uh, uh, debts and things like that. So in a sense, uh, this is an area where we can uh, try out ideas and um, bring what we think um, we, we have done well and maybe also, as very rightly mentioned, what, you, what we failed to do, what, as they say at mass, what you've done and what you failed to do. Um, and, um, and, you know, and, uh, but also sort of open it up as a space for uh, trying to invent, invent novel approaches. And when uh, Rimanta says that, that you know, um, governments, states are not uh, easily innovating, well, that's precisely what we want to change. And maybe sort of uh, try out new methods, something that uh, that's already we are doing uh, in, 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 in green sort of uh, technology. There are some things that we're doing well, but uh, maybe in other areas that things can be invented out there. You know? Because, again, I don't believe that all our recipes will work our, you know, sort of in, in, in other countries. But by trying to adjust, by trying to, sort of to, to share the experience of reforms, uh, and by constantly uh, kind of tweaking them so that they do work eventually, we'll get a new quality. So uh, we'll get a new quality of ideas which we'll, we can bring back again and learn, learn from, from, from those countries where, with, with which we have partnership of, of development. So this is where I see prim primary value of, of our effort in, in doing development aid, that we can sort of bring back these new ideas such as Africa developed and uh, enrich our societies. And, replace this convergence model with leapfrogging model, where you can sort of suddenly get in front of those people who would do that, in, behind whom you were. Yeah, uh, any comments? Because, I mean, uh, Mans, it was uh, really good, um, you know, that you picked this uh, on constant reinvention ourselves, but I wanted to ask an academia person who does research on this, so do we really learn out of those transformations we do ourselves? Or, are we capable, you know, to gather this knowledge and then, you know, test it in somewhere else? So my first question to you, on this constant reinvention, do we really learn out of it something? Is it based on academic, academic research or academic advices or it's just, you know, an experimentation without really understanding what we're going to? Thank you, thank you. There are so many things that Mandas have said that I was just reflecting on them. Um, regarding, well, for me as a political scientist, all these transformation processes have probably a bigger meaning than people coming from other fields of research because we have been into that since the re-establishment of our independence. We were researching those things and I believe that at some point uh, that was in academia that we have noticed that these experiences that we had, uh, the transformation of economy, transformation of public sector, the legal reform, all sorts of reforms could be transferred into other countries and we might help the Eastern Partnership countries first of all, but also other countries which are undergoing the same transformations. Africa, for instance, it, it could be the region where our experiences could be valuable. It's just that we don't know, we don't have this cooperation culture, once again, not only between the public and private and academia, but also cooperation culture with the other countries. Africa is so far away for us, and probably it's not probably the first priority for the Ministry of Foreign Affairs as well to get involved in Africa. So it's always about the you know, closer, close, close partners. So it was, it was in academia, there, there was a reflection uh, about our experiences. And of course, there are people who are working with, the, with various reforms, how those reforms are being implemented, how things are being done in Lithuania. Well, for instance, Institute uh, just very recently has uh, published a book on how Lithuania has managed to deal with the COVID uh, crisis from various angles, taking these experiences, uh, um, researching them and uh, making the conclusions and recommendations and also evaluating the, the experiences of the other countries. So we have this um, tendency to look in what's happening, but this is only a small piece probably of what, what is happening because our knowledge is we are looking from the academic perspective. And once again, at the beginning I said that at some point it seems that we're living in a bit of an ivory tower and uh, we are writing re recommendations that probably are not so much needed. 
the recommendations that are not so much interesting for the public sector. And um, we feel this lack of uh, cooperation between two, because if we could sit, sit together, discuss and uh, base our recommendations upon these discussions, that would be entirely different. And also with the NGOs, uh, non-governmental sector, and also with business. And I really like this uh, cooperation. One, one of the examples that I can bring uh, up is, we, uh, it is a very small example. We started with the internship for the internships, the reform of the internships for the students. Uh, that was uh, the, uh, the idea was based on the adaptive leadership, how to uh, initiate the institutional change. And uh, we introduced these uh, internships for the institutions, state institutions and businesses. And, as, uh, and that was optional. You can choose the normal in internship, but also this adaptive leadership internship. And there were not so many institutions who really liked to, to work with us on the basis of this internship. Only the brain ones, because it's about, you know, not uh, that the students would do the tasks which are required by their superiors, but they are exploring the culture of the organization. They want to initiate the change. So it was not an easy step, and then there were institutions which were interesting, but it's it's not so easy. As once again, we lack a bit this uh, cooperative culture and trust between each other. Okay, <clears throat> so let me, yes, please. If we may, uh, just very briefly, uh, reflecting on this, uh, to my, and I mean this, Cooperative culture is a bit uh, theoretical to my understanding. I mean, how we should do this, because as you said, I mean, theoretical people give us advices which we cannot implement, so that's boring, you know. I mean, write a, a book of 200 pages and uh, yeah, you have to read it, you have to, then you have to, think of it and then you have to see what's really the kind of essential over there and so on and this work is i mean it's going this way as well but it's not what busy public sector can really consume and my thinking really i mean i was sometime ago studying psychology and uh, we uh, there was one of the big uh, brains was saying that you know, when you go to psychotherapy, I don't know if you try this and lying on the couch. I mean, this is some kind of comforting uh, experience. But what he says, the next level of psychotherapy is psychotherapy in the street, is how you can comfort a person in the street. This is what really goes on. And for me, a bit this, when we talk about our reforms, we really accept academical thing which works only in some degree. As a public sector, we do not much reflect on what we're doing. We do not have meetings where we say, okay, let's discuss how to be better next year. I did not participate in this kind of meetings. Yeah? Mm -hmm. So, and I am longing for this. I mean, to, and to my, my idea is that one way of making it this kind of meetings is to try to give your experience to someone else. If we would have to go somewhere and say, for example, and they, I think these twin projects with the, our Eastern partnerships, why are they so good for us as well? Is because before going, we should think, we should have to prepare our presentations. So what worked for us, why it worked? And this is really very practical kind of self-learning experience. So what did, we write, what, what did we do right? And I think we lack this a lot. We lack it, this in a lot of forms and with probably a bit of academical of input and a lot of practical input. Uh, and I think what uh, this as well meeting is a bit of this the same exercise. We can do uh, kind of uh, it can progress in the street, like psychotherapy in the street.
Okay. Um, guys, can I a, li a little bit improvise? And since you have a mic, uh, can I have this hot chair conversation? You just answer yes or no, and I'll be giving you questions. Whether or not, Mr. Rimantas, you were a minister of economy at some point. Yes. <laughs> Whether or not you were involved in some of the biggest reforms in this country. Uh, it's discussable. Yeah. <laughs> Whether or not you were listening to what academia was telling you. Mm, I don't remember that. <laughs> Okay, and then uh, finally, whether or not other countries were telling you, hey, Rimantos, do this, I know exactly what it is. Uh, yes. Okay. <laughs> I mean, uh, but this is, yeah, we did listen, and I, in fact, that's my point. When you have a good advisor, it's extremely good. But I mean, I, do, I cannot think that this advisor could have been academic because we had practical ad advisor from Sweden who did the, something like this. We did something else, but very much relying on what, uh, what uh, kind of the way of thinking. So basically my point is there's a lot of when you, there is a lot of value in listening mm -hmm. and yeah, I don't know. No, I don't know very yeah, easy yeah, answer. Yeah, 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 that's actually the answer. I think Manta was uh, exactly reflecting on this, that you have to tell your story in 101 different ways, and this is how you learn and reflect yourself. And we see that the country also goes through this uh, process. So my question um, about... Um, um, now that we, for many, many years, we were followers, followers of EU, followers US advisors, and now all of a sudden, you know, we are discovering ourselves in a new leadership role, right? Where we want to uh, lead the conversation, where we want to establish new relations and new partnerships that we haven't had before. So what would be, you know, your thoughts about this? I mean, are we capable in doing this? So we are still, you know, the nation of followers and we cannot, you know, be uh, leaders here. I think we have plenty of things to share and to give others, and we are doing that. Uh, but the problem maybe is that we are doing that as public institutions, when we do that as private uh, businesses, implementing some projects, uh, the uh, co incorporation between academia and so on. So if we could be able to unite these efforts, we'd bo we'd, uh, we would be much better advisors as well. Uh, then uh, developing a good project in any country, I think uh, that uniting different perspectives would be very, very good. What we try to do in practice, for example, when we go to some public institution, for example, now we start a project in, Som in Somalia, and uh, we don't want just to come like IT company and say, look guys, we will write requirements for your information systems and we will tell you how to manage better your statistics. We want to bring the best experience from our institutions because we are EU member states operating in the, uh, very good standards in different uh, areas. But when we want to attract public servants, it's not so easy. One institutions are more open, other less, because again, coming back to what Rimanta said, said earlier, sometimes public sector is afraid to cooperate because uh, the rules are clear, because they can be charged that there are some private and public interests mixed and so on. So I guess what we really need and what would help uh, immensely for all us, because we all are talking here about the same things, let's cooperate better, yeah? But what it means, I think we have to be more transparent in this, so to have a very transparent set of rules. So we, it wouldn't depend on who I know from my previous work or who are my friends or so, but it would apply to everyone to be open and to trust each other. And uh, maybe it seems something very complicated, but I guess it's not. Just let's start from talking, from being able to talk to each other and to find some simple rules how this information just flows from one sector to, to another. And if everybody has the information if needed, 
and can get access uh, to right persons if needed, and it's not behind closed doors, so. Okay, and this will allow us to become those leaders. Much better. <laughs> okay, Mandas, we haven't finished with your South Sudan story. I mean, <laughs> what was uh, there? I mean, because you, you mentioned that twice. I mean, there's something more than this, right? Hello, guys, I'm mean, sorry, I, I only mentioned it because it is, it is in, in a sense, <clears throat> Africa, it's uh, about Africa and it's, uh, um, in, in its credentials, I think sort of, you know, only people who have been uh, done things in Africa, I hope, well, that was my idea, that they only have sort of, you know, tickets to get here, sort of, otherwise you're denied entry, isn't it? So what I was doing, I was doing precisely what uh, these uh, advisors were doing in the 90s to, to, to Lithuania. I was uh, coming as a member of Foreign Affairs Committee of the Lithuanian Parliament. Um, uh, to, to talk to um, my South Sudanese colleagues at the Foreign Affairs Committee and to, well, actually share how sort of foreign, uh, how Parliament can be engaged in creating foreign affairs. Before I went to South Sudan, I thought that the Lithuanian Parliament was the ugliest Parliament building in the world. Uh, no longer, I must say. Um, but uh, uh, so, uh, in a sense, uh, what was struck me is that uh, this uh, convergence and follower model uh, pr presupposes that that countries do sort of go along the same street, they're just in a different position in that street. Some, some are ahead, some are behind. But what I realized after, sort of, you know, um, well, many such experiences, not just South Sudan, but also sort of working with people in, in Tunisia, in, in Thailand, uh, in Taiwan, actually, that, you know, there, are, there is a plethora of streets. And um, in a sense, so you can share experience and it's valuable, but it's, it's not as though you can uh, tell precisely what to do. And it's, uh, in a, Every, everyone pretty much creates their own street, their own path. And that's why this convergence model, in, for me, is, is a very misleading in a way. So followers, okay, well, that's a slightly different paradigm. Uh, I don't think we're we are followers anymore. I think sort of, uh, we, we, for a very long time, we believe we, we just have to follow, and then, you know, things will come right, and then we won't have to do things anymore, you know, so we'll be able to rest and, and no longer strive. But um, uh, when you realize that, you know, you do, Go ahead, you make reforms, you innovate, not because someone tells you, not because there is an international institution which tells you, oh, we have to converge to this criteria, but because you, you realize that this is your sort of your own vital interest, that it's interesting to do that. And then, then you become become a leader, not 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 a follower. And um, to me, this is what this lab of ideas is about, that you know, so we, we want to innovate and uh, we want to create conditions in which it is easy to innovate for public sector, and in fact, it is advantageous to innovate. Uh, are we there? No, by far. I mean, of course, so what you said is, is all true, but uh, that's, that's the idea right now. I think that only if we can uh, apply this model to, to how we create and recreate our state, uh, then, then we can sort of really uh, continue, uh, continue to outgrow what the, the states that we thought once was an unreachable ideal, even better than Estonia. <laughs> yeah, so let's keep on this academic notion and uh, I, I would like to do now a quick quantitative research. Please raise a hand if you've been to Africa to any country. All right. Quite so. All right. Now, next question. Can, can, I, can I modify it? Yes. To the Sub-Saharan Africa. <laughs> okay, uh, this is just a supporting question because my next question is, how many of you went to the parliament building in Lithuania? Uh, a little bit less. Looks like we have a more exotic building in this country than uh, the continent, you know? And, and why I'm asking this, uh, and I like this notion about the reinvention, and I see Margarita is now also having something to add on this. So, Yes, but look, uh, let's get back to the main idea. Lithuania as a European lab of ideas in action. So we realized that by reinventing ourselves, we keep on going, but when do we stop? I mean, when do we start packaging this and then giving that to the, uh, to the world? So any ideas, what can we take a learning from these digital explorers? Because my first learning is that we can be successful with the projects. We can close them and celebrate. This is the best thing out of this project. Yes, we can. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I, I will split your question into 
parts, at least my answer into two parts. First of all, I'd like to concentrate on the leadership because, uh, well, when Mantas was saying, I also had, I reflected on that issue and you said, when we will stop changing and pack everything, reflect and give our experience to others, we will never stop changing because it's not, the world is changing and it's changing faster and faster and we will change all the time and, uh, you know, uh, once you go to the university, you learn something and previously you get some, you know, profession and you're happy with this profession for the rest of your life. It's not going to be the case anymore. So you have to, re you'll have to reinvent and reinvent yourself. And the states, uh, the states will have to reinvent and maybe the structure of the states uh, uh, will change. The structure how society interacts will change. The principles of sovereignty will be a attacked, challenged. It, it's going to be diffused and the, the social co contracts that we're having today with the state will be different. There will be more participants. So who's going to ensure our security in the, in, in, in the internet? It's not the state, maybe it's companies. Maybe we ourselves will, will have to have more role in that. So it's about constant change that we will be facing. And we as a small state, we are very um, vulnerable to the systemic changes. We cannot affect the system. So we'll have to change even faster and faster and smarter. So in order to become a leader, which is even more ambitious task, is uh, we have to invest in ourselves. And from this perspective of leadership, I see uh, certain things which might be improved in Lithuania. So not by coincidence, we started to talk about the young people which have, uh, which uh, work for Africa, which uh, make the projects like uh, Digital Explorers ha uh, happen. It's about the leadership. And I think what our society needs to more, uh, to put more emphasis on leadership, on individual uh, leadership, on the group leadership. And when I say leadership, it's not uh, jumping on to the table and shouting loud. It's about doing things. It's, a, it's about pointing to the problems and mobilizing people and resources to solve these problems. And it is very important in all the sectors. And probably in the in private sector it works because it's uh, profit-driven uh, and it, you have to solve the problems. You have to ensure effective solutions. But uh, in the public sector, there are a lot of problems with that because those who take the risks, they're being punished. And instead of uh, encouraging the leadership culture there, we're diminishing this uh, leadership culture. So I think that uh, we have to work uh, with these things, changing the culture, which embraces the leadership, which embraces the people who want to change things, and embrace, uh, encouraging the culture which accepts mistakes. Because what I see uh, in Lithuania, in particularly in the political field, mistakes are not accepted. If you do some bad things, you are withdrawn from the political map, you are a bad person, no one wants to remember you. But if you don't do anything, you don't make mistakes. So that's, I think that this culture has to uh, take a very important part and uh, usually with things like that, it doesn't happen top down. So I look at the young people and I look at the projects like these, I think these, this might be impetus for changing the culture. You're learning by doing, you are making mistakes, you are seeing that, you know, environment is not so friendly, but it's very important to continue doing this and to realize that even though you make mistakes and some projects are not being implemented, maybe it's not your fault, just to have this persistent and resilience and to continue that. So it is a very good example that we have, but if the next example will not be so effective and successful, please just continue doing what you do. Um, a really good notion, and I wanted to ask a really private question for Yeva. Yeva, were you fired from the public sector? <laughs> 
No. <laughs> no, wow. Uh, were you punished many times? Because I was told now that in the public sector they punish people for doing mistakes. Wow. Were you prized, uh, given bonuses for? Well, sometimes. Sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> sort of, like, a more esteem or better position sometimes. <laughs> okay, so, uh, because Marita was telling more about the culture, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, whether or not this culture is already in, in a way that we can now um, utilize this whole public sector also as a driver for the transformation. We have those fantastic initiatives like GovTech, right? So why GovTech cannot happen also in, in Nigeria? Because they are also facing exactly the same um, uh, problem. So maybe this can be also a platform where we as a Lithuanians can not just, you know, direct, hey guys, do this and this because we are now those leaders and we know exactly what you have to do because some days ago someone was telling us what we have to do. But maybe this could be also a part of a collaboration platform. It could, uh, but well, talking about the general understanding of the culture in public sector, I still think, yeah, uh, majority of people are safe, feeling safer doing things as we used to be done. And uh, during my career, of I spent many, many years in public sector, I was uh, quite uh, constantly changing my position and taking new challenges and uh, coming to new positions and then asking people why we're doing this like uh, like that. Why? Because it doesn't uh, seem efficient. And usually we see because it's written so in the law or because we always did that this way and why to change that if that works. So I think uh, it's not a one day task and it's not maybe a one year task, but I think with uh, changing of generation, with, changing, with uh, new people coming into public sector and people who sometimes from private, uh, from academia, from coming from other countries uh, after studying abroad and, and coming back, they are step by step we are changing that. Because that's uh, absolutely true that uh, if we are afraid to fail, we won't innovate. Because always when we try something new, there is a risk that we will uh, do some mistakes. If we are not afraid, then we can take these experiments like uh, like digital authorities here. We did an experiment. It's not, it's, uh, not just about uh, new connections uh, between Lithuania and Nigeria. It's not just about, uh, uh, let's say, these formal uh, objectives of a project, but as well, it was a very interesting uh, exercise for me as I was uh, with, uh, with, with that project from the start to see how people from public sector, private sector and NGOs can work together. Actually, we can. So take, let's take it from the experimental phase to implementation phase. Will we be able to do that? I think it depends a lot on us. <laughs> Well, I think that was a direct question to the central government. <clears throat> um, Rimantas, uh, were you fired the last time you left the uh, public sector? Uh, yeah. Okay, but... Uh, uh, our uh, population voted the wrong way, <laughs> so uh, basically that was firing. Uh, and maybe... I would like to add, I mean, definitely this culture change. I mean, to me, this is again a bit uh, when you say, okay, let's change a culture. So the point is, so how do we do that? And uh, one of the, uh, recently I read an article that about why United States Army is so good. Yeah. I mean, worldwide, they are so good. Uh, and the, uh, it was, by the way, a Russian article. Uh, so they are not uh, very, uh, uh, you know, positive and on evaluating those. But they are, uh, the author was telling that they are so good because it's the only army which learns from their successes. Because everybody else, when they succeed in something, they think, wow, we are the best. I mean, there was no chance that we, we just are so good that everything is cool. And United States Army, they are learning from the wars they are in. I mean, they are doing things, they're changing after successes, while everybody else 
uh, changing only when they are losing things. I mean, because they cannot go on like that. So, and for me, uh, for me, this is like encouragement a bit. I mean, we do have a success with the Africa and public sector, private sector, and I mean, with everything, it seems like we did have a nice project. So the question is, can we learn from this? Or it will be just, okay, uh, what's next? We, we will just look what's next. I'm not very sure about that, hopeful, but not exactly very sure. Um, entering into this panel discussion, I had this illusion that uh, we have many ideas, but we are really bad at execution. But now with this conversation, I realized that we are actually executing without even, you know, finding out the ideas and brainstorming what we have to do. So we are apparently to be much better executors than idea generators. So maybe, Mantas, to you, since you have uh, this long-term uh, vision uh, on where we are going with our pol foreign policy, do we really have this ambition on establishing ourselves as a lab for idea action? You didn't ask me how I was fired. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> And actually, <laughs> it's, you know, it's pretty much the same story as Rima. <laughs> I was for 12 years a member of parliament, and then as Richard Nixon said last year, the voters have spoken the bastards. <laughs> so I had to change my public, public service job. But, uh, uh, but actually, I, I'd like to start with where everyone has finished, and uh, about um, learning from successes. And one of the thoughts that I brought here is this, you know, sort of, looking at what Africa did, and, and, and uh, um, we have a totally new situation now um, next to our border. And there are sort of thousands of young people, uh, mostly young men, from uh, Iraqi Kurdistan, who, who are trying to get across Lithuania into Western Europe, looking for better economic conditions, better lives. They're not fleeing war. Um, well, not not absolute majority of them, but um, and in a sense, you know, one of the challenges for us is uh, okay, how to bolster the bodies is just a sort of short term thing. But uh, um, I, I never thought that working with Belarus would take me to Baghdad, but it did actually. So I went to Baghdad twice in in the in the last six months, and uh, the, the the sense is that we have to work with with the society, and uh, we have to do some something like like Africa did in in. Uh, uh, in, in Nigeria to, to create jobs there, to create sort of uh, uh, paths of, of, of uh, well, legal migration. Uh, and we have to spread this, this news that actually, well, the, the way to, to prosperity, the way to, to, to fulfilling yourself, uh, and the way to, to Europe, if you want, is not kind of, you know, flying to Minsk and then freezing in the forest, but actually is, is doing things, you know, sort of maybe enrolling on some sort of project like that. And um, thereby you can sort of create something different. Um, can it be scaled? I mean, that's the question for me. Can it be applied to a totally different society? I know that, you know, sort of in, in Nigeria there is an ecosystem, there is a sort of, you know, kind of all these structures. Can it be done in Iraqi Kurdistan, for example? For me, th those are the those are very practical questions. Uh, how, to, how to sort of, you know, um, make, bring success out of success. Um, and, so, and by answering sort of what I wanted to say, I sort of forgot what your question was. But <laughs> No, no, I think you are really right on the path because I was asking whether or not we can scale this. Can this be our policy? And I hear that now we have a direct uh, statement to digital explorers on your mission to Afghanistan. Please <laughs> pack. Iraq, Iraq. And Iraq as well, yes. The problem is in the region. Oh, man. Well, you can become Iraq. <laughs> All right, uh, okay guys, so in short, we have just spent an hour discussing whether or not we can become as a European lab for ideas in action. An obvious outcome of this conversation that this will never ever happen alone. This will happen with you, the explorers. Uh, thank you for being here. Thank you for coming to this country. You really helped us ourselves to, you know, to figure out and to learn and to make another transformation also in the public sector and take leadership uh, in, in this uh, successful journey where I think 
was win win both sides. So thank you, dear panelists. Uh, thank you for your contribution and uh, for you, dear audience, for listening. Thank you.